Hello! Welcome! Welcome to the Shark Stream edition of Woomy Wednesday. Um, it's me, it's Gage. I'm drinking my energy drink, I promise. I'll, I'll get there eventually. Mm. But today, so, okay. So today was supposed to be the Yorha Raids. I was supposed to be booting, booting up, booting up. Final Fantasy XIV to uh, run some near crossover content. Getting ready for Wumi Wednesday by crying over concert footage again. <laughs> As one does. Um, but here's the thing. So, my intention with the Yorha raids, I'm going to start Wumi Wednesday talking about near and Final Fantasy XIV, so bear with me a moment. Because <laughs> I was supposed to be doing that today. Um, my idea for the Yorha Raids was that I was going to play through each of them as a different class, uh, using um, outfits from the particular raid that I was playing. Now for one of these, I would be playing as a tank class, which generally, you know, um, has pretty quick queue times, there's not a lot of people playing tank class, a lot of people tend to favorite the DPS. The deeps, if you will. Um, but part of the issue is that for at least two of them, I would be playing a DPS class. Monk in the first one, and then uh, Red Mage for the third. Now, I thought about possibly doing like all three of them as tank, but that would take some practice. You know who's from the deeps? Squids. It all comes full circle. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, that would take some practice to do it all as tank. There is... I can do the last one as tank pretty well, because I ran the last one as tank a bunch to get tank gear. Um, simply because it was easier for me to just, like, hit need and get it immediately than, like, try and wrestle with, like, seven other people. Uh for uh, the gear if I was playing as DPS, and of course there's if the tank wants it, they're gonna get it, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so that, that was kind of my issue, is that I was trying to go in, like, tank would take a lot of time for me to practice the actual raids themselves, uh, but if I wanted to go in as DPS, which I knew I could do it as, uh, at least for the, the first and the third ones, 
then there was going to be, like, a long queue time. Like, I tested it, and, uh... What is it? Um... I think I was sitting there for, like, half an hour waiting to get in, and I didn't seem to be making any... any progress. So, I was... I ended up with, like, a couple different options for how I could kind of, like, mitigate the long queue times, right? So, learn to play tank for all of them, and hopefully that reduces the amount of queue time I end up with. Um, oh, God, excuse me. Um, gather up enough people that the queue time wouldn't matter, especially if those people are healers willing to heal the Yorha rates. Um, and thus making my, uh, my, my possibility of a longer queue time maybe a little bit easier to bear. Like, I might be able to get in a little bit quicker if I've got, like, a healer with me. Um, and then the third alternative that I thought of is hard queuing just as DPS, and then doing something else in the meantime until the queue popped. Um... Which I thought would be a pretty funny gimmick. Um, and maybe I could, like, choose something. Like, I was thinking, like, okay, what if I did this, and then while I'm waiting for the queue to pop, I write. Because, you know, I have writing projects that I am either actively working on or want to work on. I came up with a pretty, like, what I feel like was a pretty neat idea the other day for, like, one of those solving your own murder kind of stories. Um that, like, has been stuck in my head. I had, like, a dream about it over the weekend, and it's been stuck in my head this whole time. And I kind of want to write it out. <laughs> so I was thinking about that, but the problem is I couldn't... I didn't commit to any of these ideas in time for me to feel good about doing them. So I was just like, well, shit. And now I've got frames dropping. Did I quit out of steam? Hold on. <laughs> Well, at least we haven't actually started the actual gameplay yet. Are my, are my KDPS good? Y'all doing alright over there? Not really. Let's give it a sec. Maybe it'll even out. I think we're alright? Yeah, I think we're alright. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, it's not a question of, like, not being able to do any of these so much as, like, I couldn't bring myself to commit to any of them within a time frame that made me feel comfortable. Like, if I had decided, like, two days ago that just, like, oh yeah, I'll just write, and, like, I had decided that's what I was going to do, then I would have felt okay about it, and I probably would be playing the Yorha raids today. But I didn't make that decision. <laughs> so, uh, for now, we're gonna go ahead and commit to Splatoon for a couple of weeks. Probably shouldn't take too long. Um, the hero mode in the Splatoon games, kind of on the whole, especially like in the first and second games, is mainly there for like getting you used to the mechanics and the weapons. Um, to get into the real meat and potatoes of Splatoon, which is the multiplayer mode. Splatoon goes pretty quick if you don't go for 100%. Yeah, and I'm not going to be going for 100%. If you want to see me read all of the sunken scrolls, you can go check out the cat pull mods. They're all there. Um, master every weapon streamer. <laughs> I will not. Um... But yeah, I'm not expecting this to be a particularly long playthrough, unless I do poorly. Hello, Lucas. Welcome. I could tell you that I had to dust off the Wii U for this, but the fact of the matter is I keep my Wii U out at pretty much all times. I did clean up the gamepad recently. It was, like, really a little grime. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I can't clear the Janky Bike Game Xbox Quest. Janky Bike Game. Is that... Trials? I didn't know there was a Trials 
quest for Xbox. Hold on. Uh, which fucking... It would be Game Pass. The Game Pass app. Descender or something. Take a look here. Oh, I gotta try on go. I gotta try out fucking Ghostwire. God damn! I gotta tell you, that's one game I'm super excited to get into. Is Ghostwire Tokyo? Uh, now that that is on uh, Xbox, I want to stream it. Also, hello, Polden. I want to stream it, but I don't know if I want to stream it as a first playthrough. Or if I want to do it as, like, if I want to, like, get used to it first. Because, like, Ghostwire Tokyo is by Tango Gameworks. Damn, you're actually playing Splatoon. I am. Like, it's here. I've got it. <laughs> um, I want to try out Tokyo, uh, or Ghostwire Tokyo. I wonder what it takes to make you play Xenoblade. <laughs> well, for one thing, I have to have Xenoblade. For two things, I need to be willing to engage with a lot of menus and RPG mechanics. Because, <laughs> like, I tried out that Xenoblade X stream, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and just, like, that game has a lot going on, and it's overwhelming. Um, X is the least user-friendly. I believe it. Um, but yeah, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, I don't know whether I want to play through it first on my own and then stream it, or stream it as a first playthrough. I'm kind of leaning towards first playthrough, because by Tango Gameworks, who made Evil Within, and I want to support and show my support for Tango Gameworks as much as I possibly can, because god fucking damn it, I need Xenoblade, er, not Xenoblade, fuck, you got me fucking Evil Within, three. Serve him play Xenosaga instead. Unga Bunga Cosmos Booba. Honestly, Lucas would still probably be into that. <laughs> Way too many older games in my backlog making me miss newer games. I hear that. I'd be dead for any Xeno. How about Alien Isolation? Or Alien's uh, Infestation? I should figure out... I want to play Aliens Infestation on stream, because that's a really fucking good game, but like, god, I don't want to wrestle with 3DS emulation, or DS emulation, fucking Zelda out next month. God, you're right. Tears of the Kingdom is something I'm going to hold off until I've finished streaming all the Zelda games that I need to right now. Um, I'm going to get the game started up while I'm talking about this. Oh, that's preparing. One second. One second. There we go. Splatoon. Splatoon. Because, like, let's see. What do I want to do? I want to do... So, here's what I'm thinking. So, the last game that I finished was Skyward Sword. The next game I would like to do, ideally, would be Hyrule Warriors. And then... Breath of the Wild, and then Age of Calamity. And then do Tears of the Kingdom. I know that Age of Calamity is a uh, non-canon fix-it-fic AU. I know that. And I understand that. I do want to play it before getting to Tears of the Kingdom. I was also thinking about, like... I still need to catch up on the most recent... Uh, it's, but it's such a good non-canon fix-it-fix. <laughs> I believe it. I was also thinking about it recently. I I need to f catch up on the Capital Persona 5 stream. I was thinking, if y'all aren't planning to redo Scramble, I might do that myself. Maybe. Hard maybe. Might need to wait until I've like done Persona 3. I'm not sure yet. I kind of have a lot on my plate as is, a lot I need to get through. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see here. Uh, my white ass. 
They don't really have like a lighter gray color to kind of like match my actual eyes, so I guess I'll go with this one. Is this cool? Yeah, man. This ancient game. Hey you, yeah you, want to be the freshest squid on the block? God, do I fucking ever. We'll teach you some funky fresh moves on the way to Incopolis. Alright. Oh god, I have to start with the fucking... Oh god, okay, hold on. This is going to change as soon as I have the ability to. You might not do scramble right away. I'm thinking I'd probably grab it for steam, so at least it looks less crunchy. Using tilt controls. Unfortunately. The thing is, I know y'all already did scramble, so, like, I know, like, I think I asked about it, but, like, I don't want, like, I don't want y'all to, like, to hold y'all to that just because, like, I haven't fucking seen it all the way yet. This game is built for tilt controls. I'm tear tearing up again at the fucking baseline. Fucking squibbs. <laughs> Oh, okay. Why resets? Okay. Hold on, let me... Nailed it. I love Pusploon. Less detailed ink texture. God's Pusploon 1 was such a simple time. The ink still looks good is the thing. You're not wrong. Hi, Mitty. Thank you for knocking over, almost knocking over that empty can of Guarana. Bomb. Super's jump! 2015 was a good year. One and two have better multiplayer maps than three. Bring back more A Towers, cowards. <laughs> Alright, Callie and Marie, tell me something good. God, I'm thinking about that fucking Korean barbecue I had. Uh, we went to Austin recently, and we had Korean barbecue like the last day we were there. I say the last day, it was the second day we were there, which was the last day. <laughs> Is really good. God, if I knew a new game started with that, I would have used that for the fucking screenshot. Why must everything be so difficult for me specifically? Hold on to your tentacles. It's Inkopolis news time. Hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's unveil the current regular battle stages! Alright. They're selling shirts with Judd's picture on them! Well, he is something of a cultural icon. The depot looks like it could collapse any second! No kidding, glad I don't own a condo around there. And now, the current ranked battle stages! Splat-tastic! It's a good thing I'm not afraid of heights! <laughs> Gulp. Grant said I'm really good at drawing! Yeah, your drawings are really, uh, avant-garde. Newsflash! Newsflash! What is it? What is it? Inkopolis' great sapfish has vanished! Wait, seriously? If it isn't recovered soon, are we gonna lose power? Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Probably. I wonder if it has anything to do with that UFO crash. Sounds likely to me. I want to squeeve? I don't know. Took me a bit to realize Marie's hat wasn't a flan. Yeah, let's bring that save Mac for more one sequel. Splatoon speedrun? Oh, I missed Depot. There she is. 
Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Stay fresh! Oh, I will. Welcome to Acropolis. Still salty A, Lamau didn't win the Splatfest. Well, I feel I don't feel bad about that, cause cause cause, cause Shiver won. <laughs> I am nothing if not a simp. This is the plaza where all the freshest folk come to chill like krill. Shiver's simps are too powerful. <laughs> it's true. We are. Most Inklings here are obsessed with the hottest sport in Inkopolis. Ink battles! Fuck, they sure are! This crazy tall tower in front of you is Inkopolis Tower. It's the city's most famous landmark. Sometimes I simp for Big Man because he's Big Man. Lucas, when's the Big Man art? When are you going to make Big Man a Big Man? The man is big, but the feet were not! Don't vote for the idols, vote for your ideals. Like, that sounds like a bit of a tall order, to be honest. If anyone could handle it, it would be you. <laughs> also, lol, tall order. Because big, you see. <laughs> There's a lobby on the first floor of Megapolis Tower for online battles. <laughs> Still want to draw a Salmon at first. Understandable. The, till we get the inevitable, which idol group is your fave? Splatfest. Thanks for knocking over that empty can of Guarana, Mitty. This is the Booyah Base! The shopping mall for all your inkling needs. You can buy all the kinds of fresh gear and weapons to use in battle. But check it. The staff in the shops can be a snobby bunch. They won't serve you if they don't think you're fresh enough. Battle Dojo is on the second floor of that building over there. Check it out if you want to ha battle your friends one-on-one -on -one and sharpen your skills. You might want to steer clear of that back alley. It smells a little fishy. Everyone want to fuck Horoboros. <laughs> Can we please stop saying pee-pees in my chat? What are you people, five? <laughs> you know what else is multi- okay. <laughs> Next we have- Huh? Who's that creepy old <laughs> Audrey. Audrey, please. Save it for the locked accounts, okay? He seems like the type who could get you mixed up in something dangerous. I love things that are dangerous. I love Pisploon. Whatever, why don't you just head over to the lobby in Ankopolis Tower? That's where you can get your splat on. In splat -oon. I need to change these controls immediately. Rotate. Options. Motion controls off, please. I can't use a pro controller unless it's like in the other thing, can I? Okay, we're good. Oh, that's so much better. David, Yanwu, Delilah, Mark, Marie, Eric, Polly. Are these like actual people or these like? Because I remember when I was like testing this game to like get a good screenshot, I saw like people I knew, people like on my friends list. Joseph. Masako, David, Claudia. I think if you run into the lobby, you'll connect. Okay, let's give that a shot, I guess.
Server's undergoing maintenance. Uh oh. Well, anyway. I think it was just me, but using Gyro, the gamepad was a lot clunkier because I disabled Gyro in Splatoon 1, but definitely loved using it in Splatoon 2 onwards. I liked it better than the strap your Wiimote to your Pro Controller solution. <laughs> Is that something that I can, like, do? Like, single player? I actually don't know. Oh god, I'm gonna have to do the fucking voice, aren't I? Oh, here we fucking go! You're coming! I'm gonna need to, like, close my door, actually. Otherwise, the entire apartment's gonna hear me. I'm gonna feel real silly. Okay. Oh, uh, hey! Guess I lost my cool for a minute there! Craig Apartment. <laughs> I am Captain Cuddlefish, leader of the legendary Squid Beak Splatoon! Yeah, look at your eye. It's the look I've been looking for! You're a cold-blooded killer! Bathing in your enemy's blood! The great Zapfish, the Paris Eagopolis, has been squidnapped! Can it be squidnapped if it's not a squid? Oh, anyway. Nobody believes me, but it's the work of the Octarians, I just know it! You want revenge for the Great Turf War of a hundred years ago? I've been keeping an eye on them this whole time, of course! If you move your fingers to your lips, you sound more squiddish. Just a trivia. <laughs> they added another handsome young Craig drawing to the art book <laughs> while speaking. If I move my fingers... I think I would prefer being legible? No, that's that's reading. Understandable, I guess? Woo me. Well, they stole the great fish right out from under my nose! Please, you gotta help me rescue the great death fish! Look into my eyes. War is hell. So, I'm gonna take your silence as he is. Starting today, you are Agent 3 of the new Squid Beaks Batoon! How did you get these clothes on me? This is your brand new hero suit! It'll help you fight the Octarians! What a great fit! For hand me down from Agents 1 and 2. Now let's go get those Octo Jerks! I'm counting on you, bucko! Be sure to go roleplay beating the, the quid racist in the comments of artists on Twitter! <laughs> Shoot ink to reveal the entrance to the Octarian Lair. Alright. Let's go! <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just the funniest one. Oh, this is great! I love that color. Good, good, let's go. Give him heck, Agent 3! This game's rated E for everyone, we can't swear! Fuckers! Alright. <laughs> I can stop doing the voice now. I can't believe you didn't paint the entire hub first. It's not Turf War, I don't have to worry about that. Hey, well done! Why am I still voicing him? I don't need to voice him, I need to focus on the video's game. Checks point. Hehe, <laughs> I'm so sneaky. I'm so sneaky. You can't even fathom how sneaky I am. Gotcha! So many fake swears in Splatoon 2, and real ones because they bleep pearly. So many sparking, snuffing swears. Don't be a spoon in my stream. That's a Xenoblade 3 joke. I've never played Xenoblade 3, I just know that at one point someone calls another person a spoon. And I think that's really funny. Fuck you. 
uh, can't do anything to fuck with my controls right now, but, like, the sensitivity on the right thumbstick is a little, a little out of whack. Okay. Whee! They were lawless in Splatoon 2, that's why Anarchy 1 still slightly salty over that. You can't hit those shielded octodricks from the front! Why am I still... I don't need to. Fuck you, sir. God damn it. Excuse me, sir. Uh, hold on. Excuse me, sir. Could you kindly go fuck yourself? I went team order just because I simp for Marina. That's fair. I understand. I also simp for Marina just a little bit. Not as much as Pearl does. But, like, I still haven't actually gotten a Pearl Amiibo. I got a Marina Amiibo separate. Just because, like, I really like Marina. <laughs> so, but I think Anarchy sounds more Splatoon-like. Alright. They're married, I holler while slaving away over the zine spread. <laughs> Are those the non-disclosure tentacles that you said you were working on? Literally rendering their wedding rings right now. <laughs> I have a helmet now. I'm standards and practices approved. I was thinking the other day, I saw a post about, like, um, how standards and practices decides, like, what's okay to put in a cartoon and what isn't. And how it's just, like, it's things that are, like, conceivably really easy for kids to imitate, because they do imitate things that they see. Like, let's be real here. That's how they learn. You know, monkey see, monkey do, and all that. But, like, it's why you can't have, like, someone do, like, a closed fist punch on screen. But, like, the Dark Harvest episode of Invader Zim is okay, because what kid is conceivably going to be able to, uh... You know, harvest their classmates' fucking organs. <laughs> and I think that's really funny. I think it's really funny that it's not necessarily about, like, what is, quote-unquote, okay to show on TV or not. It's just, like, how reproducible is this action? Even then, though, some things, like, are weird. Like, I keep remembering, um, that video that, uh the Gravity Falls guy made about, like, weird standards and practices that notes that he received. I found a little man. Shout out to the one-shot in MLP where all of Fluttershy's little friends need life jackets when her kitchen flooded or whatever. My favorite thing... Nice work on your first mission! I knew you could do it, bucko! Can I upgrade my gears? I need more ink take capacity. I think my favorite thing, when I learned- when you told me about that, about, like, uh, the sort of things that, like, you needed to make sure were in there for standards and practices, like, it fucking opened my third eye. And I think my favorite thing about, like, knowing that is when you can see where things were just like, okay, we need to fucking have this in here for standards and practices, but, like, we're not gonna put any real effort into, like, explaining why it's there. 
Um, with, I think the big one being, I think there's the episode where, uh, of My Little Pony where Discord comes over to Fluttershy's house, and to make him feel more at home, she nails all of her furniture to the ceiling. And when she's actually doing the work, she just randomly has, like, a pair of safety glasses on, and then she just throws them away to, like, nowhere. And, like, I love that, actually. I think that's really funny, and it's just like, why does she have these? Don't fucking worry about it. <laughs> They're gone now. Who cares? It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> First thing to look out for is S&P. The second thing to look out for is continuity, because the fans will find it. That was the other thing that was wild to me. Fuck that guy. Someone pointed out, where did the safety glasses go? There's been a bit of a pony resurgence recently, thanks to, um... Specifically thanks to, uh, Punkit. Uh, the artist who's doing a lot of, like... Uh, MLP shitpost comics. And it's great, because we have Transfem Big Mac out of that, which is a fantastic little piece of, of fan work, if I'm being entirely honest. Love that for her. Spent a week making sure all the fucking tea and sandwiches when Discord comes over were all in the exact place they need to be, need to be during that segment. Oog. All right, here we go. Stop that. No one said you could. I'll borrow this real quick, thank you. Yoink. Whee! Ah! Not my ink. Get it out of here. Yoink! Okay. Checks point. Fuck you. Fuck you. Lunch pad? Oh yeah, there it is. this dude. Ah! No. 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 Fuck you. Bassard. Be free. all taken care of. Okay. Whee! Splish. Don't you do it. I will not be tilting that. Thank you. On Huerd. So I've been watching a shitload of Star Wars recently. <clears throat> in part because the point that I'm at in my uh, movie watching list is basically just all Star Wars stuff. 
subscribe a shitload. Well, at this point, I have watched the prequel trilogy, Solo, uh, Rogue One, the original trilogy. I finished Obi-Wan Kenobi, got caught up on uh, The Mandalorian Season 3, and I've watched a bunch of Andor. Um, I have gotten a little sidetracked uh, because I got a free two months of Peacock Premium, and I've been using it to watch Poker Face. Uh, but I'm, I'm deep in the, the Star Wars minds, animated series. Um, I've seen all of Clone Wars already. I didn't finish watching Rebels, but I'm kind of interested in Bad Batch. Not enough to just start it just yet, but... I know, Craig, I did the tutorial. I got gooped. How deep in the extended universe are you? <laughs> uh, I could be deeper. Oop, shit. Blit. Good scrub. Hello, Cal. Welcome. Could be deeper. Yes, take that exactly how you will. What's this? Ah, Inkzuka. Fuck you guys. 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 Hole? Oh, indeed. I will say, I really enjoyed Obi-Wan. So, okay. I talked about this a little bit on Twitter, but I think one of my favorite things about, like, watching Star Wars now... Um... So here's the thing about the original trilogy. They were making shit up as they went along in the original trilogy. And, like, it's kind of funny to think about now exactly how much they were making shit up. And the profound effect that that had on, like, the rest of the fucking franchise that they didn't know was going to happen. Where it's just like, they're making all these decisions, like, last... Not last minute, last minute, but like... You know, they didn't... Vader was never... What squid game is this? Oh, wait, after... This is the first Splatoon. This is Splatoon 1. So, like, Vader... Vader was never supposed to be Luke's father when they created the character for A New Home. Or, A New Home? A New Hope. <laughs> like, that, that, wasn't that wasn't supposed to happen. Like, okay, yeah. Lucas... Lucas went on fucking record, like, after, like, oh, e Empire Strikes Back came out. Like, oh, yeah, it was, Vader means father, so, you know, it's like poetry, it rhymes, blah, blah, blah. But, like, he knew a guy in school whose last name was Vader, and he just used that for the character. <laughs> yeah, so how did making shit up help with Rise of Skywalker? Uh... <laughs> We're, we're gonna go ahead and get to this. I'm talking mainly about the original trilogy right now. Um, but it's just like, it's this... It's a bustle not to overhear Star Wars talk because of my name being called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, the, the thing is, is that it's this legacy of making shit up that has, like... 
all of these absurd ramifications for later in the series, right? Sees me sharing assault vehicle. If you want me to, if you want to hear me read these, go watch the couple streams. Um, so like, Darth Vader was just originally supposed to be a dude whose first name was Darth and whose last name was Vader. That's why Obi Wan refers to him as Darth. It was meant to evoke familiarity because Darth Vader was intended to be a former of apprentice of his who actually killed Anakin Skywalker, who at the time was a separate dude entirely right okay so they decide on the vader is luke's father twist specifically for empire and he and fucking george lucas george god goddamn bless his heart tries to do all of this like revisionist nonsense and just like oh vader means father in dutch dutch slash german and it's just like shut the fuck up you didn't choose it because it sounded like father you chose it because you heard the name Darth Vader, and you're like, ooh, that sounds scary. But since it was 1977, they thought it would be a bad idea. No, it's just like, it was never it was never on the table. The original versions, like, the original, like, scripts for Star Wars had Vader, had Darth, the character who would become Darth Vader as a completely incidental character who had, who was, like, a very, like, minor villain. In fact, in those versions of the story, Luke's father is still alive. Is there something about how the main character was originally going to be called Leia? Luke's character was originally a girl. Um, I don't know the specifics about it. You talk about the Anakin Starkiller days. It might, yeah, it might have been, but like, okay, so. Vader being Luke's father was shit they made up along the way. Leia being Luke's sister is pretty clearly shit they made up along the way. That's why she makes out with him in Empire Strikes Back, because at the time, they weren't siblings, so it wasn't weird. But now, of course, we get to look back at all that and be like, hey, isn't it fucking weird how much Luke and Leia, like, are all over each other in those first two movies? Fem Luke would have made me pay more attention, to be honest. Honestly, looking back at those movies, it is absurd how gay Luke is for Han Solo. Like, partially ship-poisoned brain, but like, oh my god, the way that Luke looks at Han in those films is just like, he's so gay. He's so gay for Han Solo. My favorite part of the Star Wars musical is immediately after Luke... Luke learns the truth, there's a dramatic pause, and then, ew. <laughs> um. Oh, and then Jabba the Hutt was never supposed to be a slug. They must have made that decision, like, partway into, like, Empire Strikes Back, where they started referring to him as Jabba the Hutt. But, like, in the original version, like, there's deleted scenes from A New Hope where Jabba shows up, and he's just a guy. They repurposed that scene for, like, future editions of A New Hope, and then they CG in, like, the slug version of Jabba. And it's not a good scene, because most of the information, like, talked about in it is just rehash of everything talked about in the Greedo scene already. So it's redundant and serves no purpose. Other than, like, oh, we want to show Jabba early. I find the original trilogy okay, but I unironically find Revenge of the Sith to be the most fun one. Revenge of the Sith is pretty fun. But it's just, like, all of these... All of this shit... The only new information in the Jabba Hanger scene is Han stepping on his tail. Oh my god, the fucking compositing on him stepping on his tail is so bad. It's hilarious. <laughs> and Obi-Wan carries Revenge of the Sith. Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan was fucking inspired, quite frankly. And it's one of the reasons that, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi as, like, a series, like a Disney Plus series, works really well. That series is super good. And I'm glad that they got Hayden Christensen back for it. This guy seems mad at me. 
Do you think... Are you mad at me? Are you upset? He seems pretty upset. Chill out, man. Those cute little boots. I didn't see the boots. Let me see the boots. Sir, can I see your boots? Those are some adorable boots, actually. Kills you, kills you, kills you dead. Splatoon 1 and 2 had a few creepy bosses. Ah, <clears throat> uh, I see what we're doing. Hey man, why you have to be mid? Oh, piss! Alright. Hey, look at me, bitch. Something, something, the screaming in the BGM before you step onto the, into the arena. Haha, <laughs> kills you dead. Kills you dead, but in like a cute way. Taking all of these. Thank you. <laughs> Cutely splats blood all over the arena upon death. <laughs> Avast! They have the great archer weapons on their side! Hey, right? Good work, Agent Green! Keep it up! It's a long road to the Great Zephyr! Yeah, man. Splinters just cute little guys splooting each other dead. It's true. Antioxidants are for blue for... But yeah, like, there's a lot of... The gate is open! Let's head to the next area! There's a lot of, like... There's a lot of times where I'm just, like, I'm watching, like, Star Wars spin-off stuff. And there's things in it that are just them trying to reconcile the shit they made up. Like, oh my god. Like, the entire prequel trilogy, right? is basically just them going, how do we make all of this, like, incidental dialogue and all of these details we made make sense, right? So it's just like, okay, how does Vader not know that he has one kid, let alone two, right? How could it have been that it was just like, oh, uh, like, the fucking Obi-Wan being just like, oh, the, the Anakin killed the part of himself that was good and truly gave himself to the dark side. It's just like, that's dumb and stupid and, uh, semantics. Something, something war crimes. So then it's just like, you've got like, Obi-Wan Kenobi ending with him referring to Darth Vader as Darth. Despite the fact that that doesn't make any fucking sense because Darth is like, a title? And not like, a name? But it's just like, hey, he calls him Darth in the, in the original, like, a new hope. So, <laughs> we have to end this with him calling him Darth. Or else it's weird that he does it anyway. And it's just like, no, it's still weird. Okay. 
think. Hey, I'm alone. This prequel gets shot on for the main plot and bad dialogue, but it did a good job trying to expand the universe. It's the only portion of the nine movies that makes the world of Star Wars feel big, and that's the part of the care about I care about most. You're correct. Um, I have a book uh, of like just kind of like a Star Wars aliens guidebook, and most of the stuff that doesn't like cover things that are in like the original trilogy. Is just like, here is an alien that showed up once in Jabba's palace, and here is all the information about that alien species that you need to know. And I mean, like, that is something that I liked about the, the, the prequel trilogy. That's fair, but also, wow, Attack of the Clones is like 50% painful to watch. Uh, personally, I would say that, like, Phantom Menace is probably a little bit more painful to watch than Attack of the Clones. But that's just me. But Phantom, and Me Phantom Menace was also the only one in, like, the series that, like, really kind of went in on, like, the, uh, practical effects. Like, they still get, gave a shit about, like, doing more than just blue screen in that one. Uh, hold on, sir. Gotta get on top of this. I want more non human looking aliens, robot dudes, and more plants that don't look like places they've been to in the real original trilogy. Remember the Kenner toys having a figure for literally goddamn everyone? Anyways, that's how I learned that the random snail head guy in Moss Eisley was a rebel spy and gave them a heads up that Kenobi had been found. Snail head guy? Do you mean Hammerhead? The Ithorian? Ithorians are literally my favorite like, fucking alien in the Star Wars universe, I'm gonna be entirely honest. My f one of my favorite Jedis is Roron Karab, the fucking Ithorian uh, Jedi that, like, dies in the second season of the Gendi Tartakovsky Clone Wars. Yes, he's in the pod racer menu. You look like snails to me, okay? I'm so easy to play RE Star Wars locations these days. Anytime they're not in the desert, I'm like, fucking finally. <laughs> I didn't watch Rise of Skywalker because I don't think you need Rebel vs. Empire to be a thing in every movie. Rise of Skywalker was also just bad. I'm not actually using bombs a whole lot. I should probably never want to hear about Tatooine ever again. <laughs> Understandable. I should probably upgrade bombs and then maybe I'll use them more often. God, we can please stop having desert plants. Tatooine was enough. No! More desert. <laughs> Watching some of the spin-off material, like, I feel like I'm also starting to get, like, a little tired of, like, grassy, mountainous planets. Like, I feel like they've used the same, like basic location for shooting in, like, two different series with the intention of them being two different planets. Something, something they're doing a Batu series to get more kids to the parks. I want a Grievous miniseries. I miss Porgs. Put back Porgs. Porgs are so fucking good. Porgs got such a bad rap, and it wasn't fair. Ryan Johnson is a fucking genius.
world did not deserve fursuits for puppies. <laughs> oh! Stop that. Haha, shoots your butt. Hey, hey, stop that. I had to sustain myself with Bo Katan's poor looking helmet, and they made her take it off. <laughs> Here's the thing I actually really like Bo Katan. I'm really enjoying her presence in the new season of Mandalorian. That being said, I think it's really funny that they're going extremely hard on, like, the animated series characters now. Meaning that anybody who's just been, like, paying attention to the, uh... To the live-action series is gonna be really fucking lost when the Asuka series comes out. I like that they got to go goofy good cop, bad cop episode. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. When is Disney going to produce a Masters of Terrascasi show? Lucas, did you know that they reference Masters of Terrascasi <laughs> in Solo? Were you aware of this? Were you aware that there's a character who actively uses Terrascasi in Solo, a Star Wars story? <laughs> That's aware. That happened. I fucking lost my mind. It's just like, I can't believe they referenced Masters of Terrascasi. <laughs> There's a character who uses it as a fighting style. It's really funny, actually. I liked Solo. I thought it was a fun movie. Lucas, you might actually like Solo, honestly. I would recommend checking it out if you ever get the chance. It's a, it's a fun little Star Wars heist movie. I wish more video games could be used as martial arts. I talk about it on Twitter, but like, Solo was like, fine, but like in a good way, not like the passive-aggressive way I'll sometimes call things fine. Like when I say the Mario movie was fine, that's like passive-aggressive, it was fine. <laughs> Speaking of which, wasn't there another movie you asked if I had seen a few streams ago? I don't remember off the top of my head. When was the last time you were in my stream? I can go back and check the VOD. Stop shrinking my sponge! That's so rude. So rude of you to shrink my sponge. If it was during the second Riddick game, I may have been asking if you had seen the Chronicles of Riddick. Don't shrink my sponge, man. Ah, fuck. Fuck and piss. I'm not good at ink management. Eh. You mentioned one of those movies I have strangely never seen. Don't think it was Riddick. Okay. Well, who can say? Just got a finger off the trigger sometimes. I wanna... I don't... No. I want... On trigger. I want constantly shoot. I wanna go down here. Kiki. Finger on trigger all times. Never stop, never shooting. Wait. Could've worded that better, but I won't.
I'm a finger the trigger at all times kind of guy. <laughs> yes, I want to see it because you're looking for an excuse to watch again. If you want constantly shoot, you gotta be swamming. Reload, sir. Yeah, I'll need to I'll need to go double check the VOD. I talk about so many goddamn movies. I swear to Christ. It makes it really difficult for me to remember which ones, like, I've been fucking talking about. Yeah, inflate that cheese block. Cheese dip. Oh fuck, hold on. I'm gonna shoot this guy. Let's go. Some motherfucker enters was like Smash Bros movie and the concept already exhausts me. <laughs> I think I'm Marvel crossovered out. That's fair. I was thinking about something the other day. So, the Marvel movies have unfortunately been, like, really, really going hard on, like, the, sp the visual effects and stuff, like, to the point where it's just, like, characters don't even wear their fucking costumes anymore. They wear, like... Like, even costumes that could be, like, practically created, they just wear a suit, like a mocap suit, and it's just like, yeah, we'll do it in post. And that's embarrassing, kind of. And I was thinking about that, like, the reason that, like, so many Star Wars properties go, like, as hard as they do on practical effects these days is because we already had that period of time in Star Wars where people got exhausted by the, pra by the like, CG special effects. Like that was- oh, beans. Okay, here we go. We got comp- we got company, bucko! Act your wings ahead! Oh, I love their little outfits. These scaly wings can turn into octopuses and swim and eat, too! Hey, stop that. Kelp dome. Oh, shit! Ah! I did it! I used a bomb! <laughs> Die. Oh god, hold on. I need to catch up on messages here. I'm not sure I'm ready for another cinematic universe, but I hope after Mario Movie 2 they begin working on a Star Fox movie and Metroid Prime live action. Kelp Dome! Ah, Kelp Dome, I miss you. Come back. More like Help Dome because we need help bringing her back. Dome was fun. Splatoon 3 team would chomp two-thirds of it off. Um, uh, looking... At all the little vegetables, Spoon 3 team would be like, how do we turn the whole map into one big dumb choke point? You play the video game. Sorry for being so jaded about S3 map team, but it's true. <laughs> Excuse me. I will personally, like, personally, I'm still, like, I really enjoy the concept of the cinematic universe, because I like characters who traditionally inhabit the same universe, being able to, like, interact with characters from that universe, you know? That's an Octo Striker! Fuck, it sure is, man. Beware the Ink Strike! Get out of the way when you see it coming! Ah! Don't like that. Don't like that, no sir!
Ah. No, uh, stop it. Uh. Oh shit! That was a close one. That ink strike almost had my name on it. Hey, wait a minute. This is just the tutorial area. Bro, what a fuck? Sir. Fuck you. MCU style pisses me on. Oh, hold on. Say this part of the map, you're not supposed to I have to throw it. The reason I get worried about cinematic universe is how vexy stakes of each movie, and of course, being expected to follow everything across all movies and series and stuff. Tutorial area, post apocalyptic version. MCU style pisses me off because it's a movie about this character, and someone will be like, This this other guy comes in a third of the way through and derails the narrative, and Audrey gets exhausted. I was thinking the other day about, um... One more zapfish. Why not? Hold on. There. There. Ah, I see it. I was thinking the other day about... I was thinking the other day about the D and D movie, right? Like the like the recent one, Honor Among Thieves. Um, I saw a post today that said it was like tragically and un unnecessarily heterosexual, which it is, and that's kind of unfortunate, especially with like the large sort of like LGBT community surrounding Dungeons and Dragons as a concept, with like the idea of like, hey, you get to create a character of your own. And if that character awakens something in you, well... Wink, wink. I'm not saying this has happened to me. But it's happened to me a little bit. Anyway. So... I was thinking about, like, what I really kind of, like, liked about it the other day, because... Uh, I know, uh, my wife, Natalie, um... She was not as big a fan of it. She didn't really like the new D&D movie. And, you know, that's entirely fair. 
But, like, there was something about it that I really liked, and I had some trouble kind of, like, really putting my finger on it. Um, but I think the reason that I like it so much is just kind of how, like, I guess tight and straightforward of, like, a narrative it is. You know? Where it's just, like, this is just... It's... It's a movie where, like, the characters all have, like, their own sort of, like, thing that they're going through. D&D cartoon references. It does have those. It, it does have that. The characters show up in it. The characters from the D&D cartoon. Crabby Cakes. I want to watch it for them. <laughs> Um... But, like, it's just kind of nice having, like... A movie where it's just like, here is the goal, here are the characters, here are their motivations. And just having it be, like, just very, like, straightforward and, like, easy to kind of, like, understand, I guess. Just, like, having them all have, like, really good chemistry with each other. Like, how, how to better put this? I'm trying to... Uh, one thing that I've been trying to do recently is I've been trying to sort of express my opinions about movies without, like, qualifiers, you know? Where it's just like... Oh, the, the, like, it's not gonna change the world, but, like, I liked it. And it's just like, I don't need to, like, express that I don't think it's going to change the world. Like, that's not the point of me sharing my opinion. The point of me sharing my opinion is not to justify, like, my opinion of the thing, whether I liked it or whether I disliked it, you know? Like, it, it comes down, I saw this, like, there was this comic I saw about, like, how it was a person talking about how they were sharing their opinion on a movie after they had, like, filtered it in their mind to, like, make it the, like, least, like, um, the, the least, like, uh, I guess, like, it's inoffensive as possible, you know? It's just like, oh, I can recognize the craft on display here, but, like, I guess the movie just wasn't for me. It's just like, I should really just learn to say that I think a movie sucks. Like, that's kind of what I came... That's the, that's the sort of, like... realization that I came to where it's just like I don't need to like justify that like oh I'm not trying to like you know not to not to what's the word I'm looking for here um invalidate the work that the crew put into it, just like, I'm not invalidating the work they put in, they put a lot of work into it. The final product sucks, though. So, like, when I go on Twitter and I talk about, like, my opinion of, like, say, the Mario movie, it's just, like, it's full of a lot of, like, really comforting nostalgia bait, but, like, my guy, I've seen way better kids' movies. <laughs> the least able to be misread on social media form of the uh, of the onion. I know you said opinion, or you tried to say opinion, but I'm gonna say onion. Yeah, basically.
where it's just like, do I think the Mario movie was good? No, not really. <laughs> As someone who's worked on shows where the final product was not great, it's chill, I get it. I don't think me thinking the Mario movie wasn't great invalidates people who thought it, who like really enjoyed it. But it's just like, it was a mid-tier kids movie. Like, listen, Puss in Boots The Last Wish affected me on an emotional level, okay? Like, that movie really hit me. That movie really pulled my heartstrings in a way that, like, I could not describe particularly well. Mario movie affected me in absolutely no way other than me thinking, like, wow, Mario's pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Ouch. Puss in Boots I should have watched before Trigun Stampede. Oh, did you finally get a chance to see it? Or have you not watched it yet? Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, I really liked it, and, like, I cried. Like, a lot. I did finish Trigun Stampede, by the way. And I still think it's really, really funny how the 98 anime and Trigon Stampede are, like, completely different shows. Though it was not as emotionally effective, but also Discord streaming was fucking over the visual quality. Mario Movie doesn't really do anything particularly original as a movie, but people like Mario, and it's the first time people could see it in movie form. It was mostly faithful to what Mario is. It was faithful to Mario in that Mario is a plumber who is Italian. And they made him a plumber who was Italian. <laughs> oh, no, I get you. Like, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this, but like, I cry really easily at movies. Like, hilariously easily. Animated movies especially. It is very easy for a film to make me cry. My eyes were dry the entire way through the Mario movie. <laughs> like, they didn't even, like, manage the most basic emotional manipulation for me. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny, and it's probably indicative of how I felt about that film more than anything. <laughs> Mario movie was cute and I managed to see it with my family instead of obnoxious Sonic fan. What ruined the last movie go experience? I almost cried at Luigi scenes, but it's because Dream Team changed how I see Luigi forever. I get that. Scritchy. Scratch. Which that sound? Cuttlefish. Blast it, radio. Wish be broken. I cried at Mario because I was, one, drinking, and two, openly shoveling the nostalgia bait into my gaping maw. You're doing great, AG3! Don't let up! And the nostalgia bait was neat. The only annoyance I have to endure online is people wanting to scrutinize me for not liking Chris Pratt. People are scrutinizing you for not liking Chris Pratt? I thought that was, like, the common opinion. Oh, and watching the movie with the Brazilian dub. I mean, from what I hear, the, like, dub version of Mario is, like, better in pretty much all cases. I saw people being like, oh, Chris Pratt did a serviceable job. It's just like, no, I'm not giving that man any credit. He gets nothing from me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chris Pratt sounded perfectly Mario. God, fuck off with that. Fucking Cranky Kong phoning it. You know who Cranky Kong reminded me of after I had time to think about it? 
Cranky Kong reminded me of Captain Caveman and Scoob for some reason. Now that I've really had time to think about it. Oh no. Gauge that. Well, Audrey, the good news is I'm not ruining any part of the movie that you liked, so there's that at least. <laughs> it's surprising how hard the Brazilian VA tried to sound like the character's accent and all. That's good. I'm glad. Listen, I get it. Celebrity voice actors. For some reason, studios keep thinking they need to do that. Like, Illumination especially. Like, I don't know. I would prefer somebody who's actually, like, giving a shit about the material. Charlie Day was good. Jack Black as Bowser? Perfect. No notes. Hell, I don't even think, like... I don't think Anya Taylor-Joy Taylor did a bad job. I think she was fine. Get this ink. Like, Peach was actually, like, neat in that movie. Like, she had some nice scenes. Like, can you get girl boss with your fists and click? It's not like Anya, but they thought the Peach portrayal was kind of off in general. Uh, like, can you girl boss with your fish unclench a little bit? I think my favorite scene with Peach in that movie was, like, uh,. I think when they were talking about, like, the obstacle course, and she was just like, oh, nobody gets it on the first try, and he's like, not even you? And just like, oh, no, it was super difficult. You got it on the first try, the oh, I totally got it on the first try. I thought that was really fun. I thought that was funny. One thing that I thought was, like... <laughs> I remember... Fucking, like, the scene where, like, Bowser, like, actively confesses his love to her. I was watching that, and when she was just like, Ew, no! And I'm just sitting there just like, Said no one ever. What? <laughs> what person is honestly going to look at Bowser and be like, Ew, no, I would never date you. Like, that's absurd, and does not, like, my immersion is broken. I hope Daisy just fucking bashes her way in with a Jersey accent or something and forcibly becomes a princess. At some point, we're gonna get, like, a Sarasa Land name drop, I'm sure. Like, I still think she's not really a peach, but in order for pure and delicate game peach to work in a movie where she's the only female character in the cast, the script would need a huge rewrite and more focus on her development. If you're really going with the humans are not a native species route. Oh, shit. Okay. So that had just happened. Please close the door. Thank you. Bay another voice. You can be a badass and still be girly and still girly. Everyone's just cowards. Jeeb. That wasn't Jeeb, that was Excel. Renditions Kooplings will be in the next movie, Daisy Maiden Ram not show up, but Pauline will be a real character and Toadette will be in it. I have supreme doubts if Toadette's gonna be in it, if they can't even bring themselves to, like, use Toadsworth in a role that was literally made for Toadsworth. Like, oh, here's a- here's a Toad who's like a friggin... 
Like, advisor to the princess. Why isn't he Toadsworth? Fuck you, Miyamoto hates Toadsworth, I guess. Whatever. I'm glad Pauline got to be there for a second. I saw Pauline in that movie and just like, oh, this is for Audrey. This is specifically... This is specifically Audrey bait right here. They didn't give him a mustache. Cowardice. I'm gonna eat this curried lentils. They got me right away, Gage. <laughs> I'm sorry. One of the funny things I, I like to think about is, like, people being like, oh, all the, like, little background references to Mario stuff, and it's just like, oh, man, if you like background references to Mario stuff, then let me introduce you to a little movie called Super Mario Brothers from 1993. If you like it here, you'll like it anywhere, cowards. You Philistines. Anyways, Natalie's baby sister really liked the movie, and I'm glad for her. I ought to show her the 1993 movie at some point. Just be like, for the longest time, this is all we had. They're giving me a lot of, like, green ink colors, and I really appreciate that. I bet the Luma will appear in the second movie with the script making everyone think they're still just there for the funnies of Treasure Island's Bridge Galaxy theme Mario Movie 3. I think I made a joke that like the third movie is gonna end with like a mid credit scene where they talk about finding a file from over 50 years ago and then like... Toad is like, my god! Project Wario! And like, Wario rises out of the of cryo tube in the ground. That's my prediction. Where do I fucking go? Oh, over there. I mainly make that joke because there's definitely a scene. Like, there's a scene in the Mario movie that is just straight up ripped off from Sonic and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. You can't fool me. Sega does what Nintendo don't, you motherfuckers. Don't shoot me. I really like the joke somebody made about how, like, uh, the second Super Mario Brothers movie in Japan is gonna be an entirely two movie, but in the US we're just gonna get a reskinned Minions 2. Or Despicable Me 2, excuse me. I don't wanna talk too much about, like, third second movie predictions because it would get into, like, spoilers for, uh, the current movie. And despite the fact that I did not think it was a particularly good movie. Some people did. And some people might still like to see it fresh fresh as a fresh as a daisy, if you were. I think the third movie will end after Mario remakes the galaxy like in the game, and then that makes portals open and suddenly Kirby appears. I still can't really get over how clunky of a line, oh, it's a big universe out there with lots of galaxies. It's just like, yeah, we get it. Splatoon TV show, Splatoon TV show. I just want a corny Star Fox space opera. I want Star Wars, but it's furries. TV show if Ninjala can do Is there a fucking Ninjala TV show? I was not even aware of that. 
the Octarians probably has the key. Find it. What? Why am I looking? Oh god. Oh god. Hold on. Oh, hey. Yoink. I just found it by complete accident. Who'd have thought? I'm gonna be honest, I want every Nintendo IP to get something, but whatever they can do with Zelda, I'm probably gonna hate it. I saw somebody talking the other day about how, like, they've been seeing people complaining about how, like, every action movie these days is made in, like, a John Wick style. And it's just like, bro, if John Wick is the movie that we're, like, following the leader on, like, that's fine. That's okay. I have no problems with that. That is a solid formula to use. I got fucking wrecked. Shit. Well, that didn't work. Zelda already got a perfect cartoon. That's right. <laughs> Metroid and Star Fox are some perfect IPs for movies. You're right, you're correct, and you should say it. Doom TV show so someone can look at my resume and go, nah, when I apply. <laughs> the requirement says that there should be a scene where Fox is shirtless. Oh, all of them should get half naked at some point, honestly. It's only fair. Although, really, my only, like... The one thing... That I will say, like, if they do anything with Star Fox, is that if they adapt Star Fox Adventure, they need to use, like, concepts from the original version of the game, where, like, Crystal was, like, a playable character you could switch to. Because let me tell you, these days, these days, taking, like, your flagship female character and sticking her in a crystal for, like, 90% of a movie or show, or season of a TV show, not gonna fly, TBH. Especially not with me. Like, furries are gonna want some content, and you're gonna- and if you're making a Star Fox thing, you're gonna want that furry money. You know, that actually reminds me of something. Uh, different topic entirely. Something that I've seen- a, a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A sentiment that I think is the word I'm looking for. Uh, hold on. I want a far Fox Crystal Buddy Adventure. It'd be nice if they stopped trying to remake Star Fox 1 and reintegrated Crystal and Panther into the cast. Gage, have you seen the concept art of Feral Alien Crystal? Please stop remaking Star Fox 64. It is... I can't even begin to like... Just make a sequel to fucking Command already. I promise you, it'll be way more interesting than anything you could come up with that is just a rehash of Star Fox 64. 
P.S. Give me Assault HD, god damn you. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay. So there's a sentiment that I've been seeing recently. Um, specifically regarding, like, uh, furry stuff. Oh, shit. Can't do that. Where I've been seeing people say that, like, there should be, like, a complete rejection of anything, like, even, like, attempting sort of, like, a corporate, like, pandering to furries. And, like, I get where that comes from. I do. Part of what's great about furry is just, like, like, furry culture is just, like, how, like, I guess just not... Oh, shit. Completely whiffed that. I thought I could make it, and then I didn't. Something that's great about furry culture is basically just, like, how uncorporate it is. Where it's just, like, a strength of it is that there isn't, like, a central... Like, piece of fiction to point to and say, like, this is the thing that we're all into. Like, you know, Star Wars fandom has, like, Star Wars or, like, Trek Trekkies and things like that. Like, furries, it's just like, no, we just... There's a, there's a concept that we all enjoy, and we're just gonna stick with that. But at the same time, like, as somebody who is, like... Okay, so... I've been... Most people who have been to my streams before will know that, like, just for the longest time, I have actively been working on, like, a project that is basically a story starring a bunch of furry characters. I gotta tell you, if somebody came to me and was just like, hey, we want to option this for, like, a movie or a TV show, I'd be like... Yes, absolutely. Like, I would love to see that happen. Like, I wouldn't say yes with, like, absolutely no hesitation. Like, okay, give me a contract first, what kind of royalties do I get? But, like, I'm not a- that's not the sort of thing that I would, like, say no to. But, like, the idea- like, it kind of sucks the idea that, like, somebody could look at, like, my desire to, like, want that to happen and think that that's, like, a betrayal, you know? Uh, Solar Return with Online, much better than GameCube Online and the Tent Switch. Furry is almost 100% a community-driven economy. It's entirely bring your own. I can wear up to three pieces of armor. Hot damn! I don't know what any of this is. Hold on. I don't know. It's just this whole thing where it's just like... I want to succeed to some degree. I haven't really gotten anything over... Well, that's the corner that, like, I entered in on. Hold on. Okay, I see it. Sometimes you find groups that are like, what, you draw dragons without digit grade legs? Pfft, that's so incorrect. <laughs> True, but at the same time, like, you'll also find people who are just like, holy shit, cool dragon. And that's really what makes it all worth it. In the end, that's what it's all about. Is drawing cool dragons. Hold on. Cool flexing dragons. Yeah. Ah. <coughs> Ow. Oh god. I'm out here like, hey, you don't like drawing digitigrade feet? Cool, I'm a robot and I swapped out for plantigrade feet for the day. Have fun. <laughs>
Fuck you. By the way, you're not aiming for the sunken scrolls? No, not really. This game was kind of a break glass in case of not knowing what to do game, so I'm not, like, actively looking to 100% it. I just wanted to play and have a good time. Me out here like, I draw the Persona once a year and pretty much only in Sonic style because bats are a fuck shit to draw otherwise. You've probably already seen them. B and I forced him to read all of them a little while ago, lol. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I offered! What are you talking about forced me to? I offered to do it because I wanted to be on stream and have fun with my friends. But yeah, you can go check out the uh, cat hole VODs of the Catpole Wumi Wednesday VODs. And uh, check out me reading all those. I did funny voices. I say because there were many. <laughs> I should uh, upload the rest of those VODs from the last month or so. Lamau. Ink Zuka. Uh, 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 uh. Can't fucking fuck you. Ah! Oh, I got him, I guess. Okay, cool. That's neat. I think this Perlina piece might be close to done, though, so I'm gonna go grab food, but I'll still be lurking. Enjoy lurk. What time is it right now? I've been going for a little less than two hours. I think I might go ahead and finish this island and then call it a stream, and we'll pick this up next week. Yeah, the main thing is just, like, ideally, I would like to succeed, but, like, my concern, like, I would hope that, like, it's not viewed as some sort of, like, I don't know. Like, I would want to do all I can to make sure that, like, what I'm doing is, like, true to the spirit of, like, my ideals when I was, like, creating this world, you know? Those ideals being, I made all of these characters that I am, like, incredibly horny for. <laughs> that was my driving force between ma behind making my entire cast. <laughs> I'm working on a bunny piece. It has bunny mund in it. Fun! Octo Striker. Okay. Woo! Oh, shit. Hold on. I mean, points at your avatar. I need to show you because it has some cool perspective. I think it's really funny that, like, in Rise of the Guardians, like, if you know about it, there's, like, all of this fucking, like, lore that isn't even, like, briefly touched upon in the movie. Because it's just, like... Because they're out here just, like, we're making this movie for, for kids who probably haven't even read these books. Like, why would... What's even the point? Weird that it didn't get sequels. It's not that weird. I don't think it did particularly well. 
Who are they gonna make sequels for? The people that wanted Jack Frost to fuck Elsa? I'm gonna go grab this real quick one second. Right I probably could have utilized that a little bit better. I'll do it for dental work. While pregnant for some reason. We wanted Bunny Moon to get more jacked over time, but it's Spider Man's baby. <laughs> I mean, the Doctor Strange shows up because he can't fucking stay out of other people's movies. <laughs> Doctor Strange can't even stay out of his own movie. How many Doctor Stranges were in that film? Like, three at least. Four, actually. Because there's the one from the beginning, and there's the one from, like, the, the, the final battle at the end, and then there's the one in the flashback, and then there's our main boy. Get him out of here. No more doctors. Take away his certifications. Doctor Change will make cameos in every movie now. Also, can I can I just say? Can I like? Can I just say? Um, I'm really excited for the new Spider Verse movie. I am truly. It's real, real rich to see them, like, being like, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe isn't 616, it's 199999. When I know for a fact that they literally tried to identify themselves as the ultimate universe in, uh, in the first movie. Which, by the way, technically speaking, the Ultimate Universe doesn't exist anymore because in the comics it was combined with the main universe. That's why you've got Miles Morales in uh, the main Marvel universe in the comics now. It was this whole thing. I think I could probably play a little more before ending, depending on how well this goes. Cloister! Oh, that's not a cloister. That's one of those other ones. God, I missed the stomp clap intros from two. Giant morph ball. Ooh. Whoa! Okay, I see how we're doing this. Gotcha, idiot. Woo me. brain take. Hey, look, it's the final boss of Puppet's Bunker. Pup Puppy Bunky. It's only the final boss of Puppy Bunky if it transforms into a large woman. I'm gonna be real. This doesn't seem like the kind of thing that's gonna turn into a big lady. We're getting all the wet noises out of the way early. 
Yo, we out here wet? We out here getting moist? Oh shit. Haha! Moist in this hole. Oh, I won. Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta get all these first. One second, little zap fish. Okay, thank you. Lucas, this looks real this looks real cool. Additionally, Audrey, this looks real cool. Both of your arts look real cool. Hello, Sean! Welcome! Ha, dang, Agent 3, you're on fire! We have got a bad feeling about Well I miss my wife, Agent 3. Yeah, I'll just go take a quick look for myself. By the way, I've been meaning to introduce you to Agents 1 and 2. Once we're all assembled, I'll bake some creepy cakes. Uh, no! You! It can't be! <laughs> Time to face the music, old timer. Wait! Grar. That's how I say I love you in dinosaur. Stop! No! Octavio bashing down his door like, Hello, it is your ex! Strangulation noises. And it explodes to a giant cali made of goo. Oh, wait. Scratch. One. Cuttlefish. Dot, dot, dot! Oh, beans! Octo whirl. Octo what? Octo humpst? Bakum. Wow. Whee! Yeah, I can go a little bit longer, I think. I got energy drink in me. I got stamina ass. Not that much, though. Alright, where are we? This place. Sorry, I put the gamepad down and it pressed down on the right trigger. Six zapfish, fuck off. What's down there? <clears throat> Captain Cuttlefish, it is I, your ex. You never call anymore, like, come on. We were supposed to go to the Clam Blitz game last week. I think I need some space! Anyway. <laughs> uh. I really want to see the D&D movie again. I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about it. It's just a really enjoyable little adventure heist movie. Very, very tightly plotted. Very trimmed of fat. And it kind of felt like the sort of story I would write. Which I like. I like when movies feel like I could have potentially writ written them. With how they are just generally plotted and such.
Also, Chris Pine's fantastic in it. I should, I, that should not go unsaid. Anyways, let's see. Ah, oh, these fucking guys. Haha, <laughs> yes, die. Haha, <laughs> crush, kill, destroy. Uh, hold on, let me just... I think movies are good. I should watch more movies. But right now I'm watching Poker Face, which is also very good. Uh, Poker Face is, of course, a uh, series on Param or not Paramount, Peacock Premium. Or just Peacock, I guess. Which I think is like NBC's streaming service or whatever. Uh, it is it is by ya boy Ryan Johnson. And it is a murder mystery show in the style of the Columbos. Where, like, they kind of just show you, like, right out the gate, like, hey, here's who did the murder, who, here's who got murdered, here's how it happened. And then, like, the fun of the show is, like, how is the protagonist going to figure this out? It's really nice, honestly. Should be like, you like movies? Fuck you. That's true. Twitter do be like that sometimes. So knives how it worked, right? It's good plot framing. Yeah, sort of, I guess. I guess it's pretty similar to that. But like in Knives Out, you didn't know specifically who was like responsible. And really, um, It's uh, Marta who is the protagonist in that one, as opposed to, like, trying to watch Benoit Blanc trying to figure it out. He's, Because, like, Benoit Blanc is not the protagonist of Knives Out. He is 100% the, the protagonist of Glass Onion. Alternatively, you don't like movies? Heretic! Death to the Blasphemer! Ah! Alright, uh, oh. Hey, hey, don't do that. I forgot how wonky Splat 1 looks in terms of animations. Hello! Deep Set Inc. Welcome to the Shark Stream. Oh god, I don't know if I can read upside down. Crackle! Ksh, crackle, but like upside down! I can't believe three games in and Octolings can't have that hairstyle. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello! But like upside down. You're holding that upside down. Oh! Agent 1 of the new Squid Beak Splatoon reporting in! Agent 2 also reporting in. We got an SOS from Cap and Cuttlefish. Are you Agent 3? Don't worry, we're your new support team. How does that make sense? Don't worry about it. Yep, we're taking over for the Cap'n. Well, we're gonna try. But we gotta hurry, or the Captain's as good as sushi. Let's roll, Agent 3. Okay, definitely not Callie and Marie. 100% not the Squid Sisters, why would you think that? That would be absurd, if it was actually the Squid Sisters, could you imagine? Oh. They are clearly not the Squid Sisters, they are my original characters, Agent 1 and 2. 
fuck? <laughs> Nailed it. Woo! Original OC, do not steal. Original, original character. The originalist, if you will. And I sure hope that wasn't Squid Sisters with a the killer theme song. I'd hate that. <laughs> the Octolings with seaweed on their head are super tough. Agent 3, try to take the high ground! It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground. Fuck you. Splat it up good and get going. I'ma splat it up, so good girl. It's like Clark Kent and Superman. As soon as you wear something on your face, people don't recognize you. Bam! New person. See what he's like Popeye eating spinach. Popeye eating spinach reminds me of Cocaine Bear. Did anyone else see Cocaine Bear? I saw Cocaine Bear. It's alright. There's a movie about a bear who does cocaine. Like, It knows what it's about. Nothing to do with anything, but something really great happened to me recently. I can wait to talk about it later, though. Oh, I'm glad to hear. No, but I would like to. I went and watched the Mario movie instead. I did see the Super Mario film, though. I did talk about the Super Mario movie earlier. You'll have to watch the VOD. No, I'm kidding. Um, my general opinion is that I thought it was not good, but, like, you know, <laughs> I thought it was bad. <laughs> I didn't really like I mean, like, I liked... I, mm. Okay. My full thoughts on it, which I did put on Twitter, basically, it's a mid-tier... It is a mid-tier kids film with a lot of really comfortable mis nostalgia bait in it. And I mean, like, if you go in for that sort of thing, like, more power to you. But, like, you know. It was no Puss in Boots The Last Wish. Ouch. My guts and aches. My favorite clip of the old Superman movies is Christopher Reed doing the transition from Clark to Soups, and it's like his posture changes, he stops scrunching his face up, and he drops his voice to a more natural tone. It's like, wow, that's how you can sell that they're different. Oh no, I took too long to sell an acne, and the VOD has moved on. Whoopsie daisy! Ain't that just the way. I actually quite liked it, but I can see how it's not everybody's cup of tea. Pleasant Boots 2 is absolutely phenomenal and actually changed me as a person. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I came out of Super Mario Brothers wanting a Luigi's Mansion movie, to be honest. I feel like that's one of the biggest compliments I could give it. Like, wow. This made me want a completely different movie. <laughs> Puss in Boots 2 changed me as a person, too. I went from a non-wolf person to a wolf person. JK, I was always a wolf person. Yeah, I know you were. You liar. Ooh, Octo Sneeper. Hey, don't do that. That's real rude of you. Oh, shit. Ah! Woo! Wah! Wah, no, don't do that! Ah! I am a feared. Woohoo! Woohoo! 
I support. I think it could have been a lot worse. I was expecting minions sing level gags. It was safe and inoffensive at the same time, though. I hope the Super Super Mario animation to be a little bit more daring. I don't know if that's the right word. Illumination. I, I do not, under any circumstances, think that Illumination is going to become more daring. They're, they're just not. <laughs> they make easily marketable, safe, animated films. That's not going to change. They're not the company to do things that are daring. You want that shit, you go to, like, Sony Animation or DreamWorks or something. Like, I would love it if Illumination got more daring. I just, like, I look at them and just, like, there's no way. I'd love to be proven wrong. But, like, I can under no circumstances see them ever doing anything more than, like, what they're already, like, proving to be good at. Disney isn't great these days either. I would say if Nintendo asked them to do a Star Fox or Metroid movie, gloves off, I riot. <laughs> Please give those properties to people that deserve it. <laughs> Like, Mario as a property is, like, the definition of, like, safe and marketable, so, like, Illumination is kind of a perfect studio to make that movie anyway. Do I wish, like, it had been, like, some, th like, a different studio? Maybe. I think, like, other studios could have done, like, way better jobs. But, like, I kind of get the choice of studio there, you know? Like, I understand it. Illumination stuff for Mario absolutely adore. The one of the best things about about it, I would say, is that it's definitely like it doesn't look like any other Illumination movie, except for like that one dog. If you know the one I'm talking about, you know. Yeah, the dog was straight up an unused model from Secret Life of Pets. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> That's what I've been saying! God, this is a long level. Holy shit. Okay. I mean, thanks, Rabba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> no amount of armor was going to save me from that. The Zapfish is totally up there. Total, man. Well. But like, overall, like, it looked more Mario than it did, like, an Illumination movie. Like, I was very happy to see that everybody seemed to have, like, the correct amount of teeth. Because, like, if there's one thing that always gets me about Illumination designs, everyone seems to have way more teeth than they need. Who will win? Advanced Inkling Armor or Gravity? I will say I'm hoping and wishing for Punch-Out! moving the style of Puzzle Me Sewer into the Spider-Verse. Punch-Out! is my favorite franchise, and though it's dead, seeing all the references to it in the Mario movie gave me some hope for something. 
Oh, that was the baby Callie and baby Marie one. Scandal in Acopolis. The Squid Sisters aren't actually sisters? Oh. Have on your replaced stages, they replace the baby's fish with the plushie of the baby. The baby. Speaking of Metroid. Woomy. I can't wait to see where the fucking Metroid series goes from here, like... If they are, like, hard at work at Metroid Prime 4, I, with just with everything they've been doing with the Metroid series recently, I'm really excited to see where that goes. Like, I fucking loved Metroid Dread. It was everything I wanted. Go, but I will drop a follow on my way out. Cheers. Thank you for the eventual follow once it hits my screen. There it is! <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Deep Setting. Thank you for joining the Waba Gang, which is a piece of branding I really need to get around to making. Wabu wabu. No, see, like wabagang, like a wabagong, which is a type of shark. Carpet shark, actually. They're really cool. They disguise themselves on the sea floor and then eat unsuspecting prey. There's a video of one eating a, uh, I think it's a spiny dogfish? That is just like inset in my mind, it lives rent free. Because, like, this motherfucker eats this, eats this spiny dogfish, you see. And it's just like, oh no, spiny dogfish have spine. Like, what did it expect to happen, you know? You're gonna eat Wabagon. Oh, it's a Wabagon. And a no, Wabagon. Like, with a G at the end. You can look it up. They're cool. They got little tassels. They got little tassels on their mouths. One of them's in a zoo book commercial back when I was a kid. Flat boy. Spelling is hard. Spelling do be hard sometimes. Cracks my knuckles. I did it. Oh, wait, hold on, actually. No, nope, no, nope, go back, go back, go back. I actually want to get on this one. Whee! Actually, hold on. No, this is where I want to go. Here we go. Like, memory unlocked, level of recollection. You have unlocked a formative experience. Oh, shit. Oh, snippy snaps! It's an Octo Striker! 
Try swimming to zip out of the way of the knee strike. I will not. I will run for my fucking life like a fool. Woohoo! Ah! y'all. Gotcha, idiot. Get Splathead on. You're a kid now, you're a squid now, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid now. Paint it all now, up the wall now. Okay, where am I going now? Where is the next level? Not there. There's a grumble grumble, there's a mumble mumble. Over here. Aha! I found you. You got you just got splatted. Wednesdays at nine to eight central on NBC. It's about two and three map designers need to hear the up the wall now part. All right, reset the clock on time since Lucas has complained about the Splatoon three map designer. <laughs> I make little joke, Lucas. You are my friend. I appreciate you being here and complaining about game design. <laughs> Woohoo! Nailed it. I'm eternally salty over them. Well, not eternally. Because Splatoon 4 will happen someday. And then you'll get to be salty over those! I make lethal joke. Ah! Rude ass. Haha, <laughs> missed me, idiot. Haha, <laughs> missed me, idiot. I mean, it's 50 <laughs> oh, I want to get all these. I want to get those eggs. The power eggs, or the pegs. Whee! I'm just gonna go up here, I'm just gonna go up here, I'm just gonna go up here. Hi! Fuck you.
Acid likes getting peg. <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that with the response. <laughs> Alright. Uh, paint it all now. Up the wall now. Let's go. You're a kid now. You're a squid now. Ouch! He doesn't see me. Spray attack! Ah, fuck! Oh. Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, eh, ah, uh, 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 uh. He doesn't know I'm here! Spray attack. Ah! Oh, bitch! Darby the key, ya bucko! Yeah, the cuttlefish impression needs work. <laughs> Oh, I love these goobers. These fucking goobs. Whoop. Let me in. Smells like octolings. What does that smell like? Does it smell good? Do octolings smell good? Question for the ages. Oh, shit. You seen the game daily guessing game page? Don't know what that is. Gonna be real with you. Huh. I saved all the zapfish. Shares go to the boss kettle. It's a fun little thing. I'll link. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, whoa. Oh. Yoink. What's in this one? Oh, here we are. The Ravenous Octoma. I'm almost done with this. Next stream is not likely to fill a two hour block, if I'm gonna be honest. Oh. Oh, hey, there it is. Hello, Zapish! Oh no! Oh no, what happened? Uh... Horrifying. Oh! Ah, don't do that. Am I supposed to like... Oh. Of course. I am a fool. Is that a goop you? It's a little gooboo like isn't it? Ah. I'm starting to suspect I never beat Splatoon 1. I don't remember this boss. Oh! I got bit. I got heckin' vored, y'all. Sup, idiot, I'm back. Eat that. Are the teeth going to be golds next? Yep. Excuse me, sir. Anyway.
I did it. Woomy. And that's going to be it for today's stream. I want to thank everybody for coming by. I hope you all had a good time. I know I did. If you enjoyed this... Oh, hold on. Holy mackerel, Pancakes, Asian 3. You're really good. Let me get my mic moved back in. You're really good. I've seen better. If you keep this up, we'll find the great Zapfish in no time. That's great and all, but don't forget about the captain. Scritchy. Scritch. Who is this? <laughs> Inkopolis. Ah, it's the final boss! Give us back the great Zapfish, you jerk! And Kaplan Cuttlefish. We want him back, too. Inkopolis is mine. Yo. Dude, seriously. Get your own radio channel. Agent 3, you gotta do something about this guy, and quick! But yeah, that's gonna be it for today. I want to thank everybody for coming by the stream. I hope you all had a good time. I know I did. If you enjoyed this stream, you can subscribe here on Twitch. We have special emotes for subscribers. You can also follow me on Twitter and Tumblr at AcidXShark. That's A-C-I-D-X-S-H-A-R-K. Uh, where I post all the streams as they happen. And you can follow me on YouTube, where I post all the streams after they happen. At the exact same goddamn username. Wouldn't you know it? Um, blah, 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 blah. what else? What else? Uh, art for the stream. Um, thumbnail. The fantastic new thumbnail art of uh, As Shark as a Shark Doling. Um, and uh, of course, my PNG tuber were done by Audrey and B of Team Capful, who we will be raiding, so stick around for that. We're gonna get that set up right now. Um,. Let me just... Team Catpole. You can find them on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube at Team Catpole. That's T-E-A-M-C-A-T-P-L-E. -E. Uh, they do fantastic work. Um, their, their stuff is consistently really good. Uh, cannot possibly recommend them enough for all of your art needs. Um, and they are currently playing The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, which I'm going to be raiding, but I will not be sticking around for it because I really want to play that game for myself, and maybe I'll do that tonight. Maybe I'll just do that. Um. Upcoming streams. Tomorrow. What's tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Thursday? Tomorrow's going to be more Chronicles of Riddick. Uh, we are going to be continuing Assault on Dark Athena. Um, if the Butcher Bay playthrough is any indication of how long that the game is like split down into sections um then uh we may be finishing assault on dark athena actually potentially um friday i will be playing some more d4 uh dark dreams don't die and then saturday uh we will be starting fatal frame the mask of lunar eclipse now, starting next week, um, scheduling is probably going to be a little bit weirder, potentially. Um, I, my schedule at work is changing. I am going to be working four days a week, ten hours each, um, Sunday through Wednesday. I'll still be able to stream on Wednesday, since I won't have to get up early the next day. And then, like, I have my other three days off. But I don't know if I'm going to maintain the current streaming schedule... Uh, or if I'm going to try and switch things up. I'm going to see how I feel like doing my normal streaming schedule with this new work schedule. Um, but if I do decide to switch things up, y'all will be the first to know. Uh, and then next Wednesday, uh, I'll probably be finishing Splatoon 1. And then I'll decide to if I want to move on to Splatoon 2, if I want to figure out um, how I want to handle the near raids, uh, depending on how that goes. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it. I'll see you next time on the shark stream. Uh, same shark time, same shark channel. Uh, how do I get the fuck out of here? Here we go. Have a good night, everybody. One second, I can't figure out how to quit back to the title screen. Actually, I don't think I can. Alright, bye everybody.